the lawn and landscape today. We're going to go over fertilizing warm season grasses. I pulled some information from NC State's website, put it in a bullet point list, and we're going to kind of go through what they suggest as far as fertilizing goes. And then we're going to look at the two fertilizers that we use. We split up our fertilizers between Bermuda and Zoysia and then Centipede and St. Augustine. And we fertilize uh, with a nitrogen fertilizer three times a year and then one time in the fall with a potassium fertilizer. Without further ado, we're going to go through this sheet here. And so when to fertilize? Several weeks after the lawn turns fully green, that's typically late April, early May, make sure there's no chance of freeze. All right, how much and when for Bermuda? So the timing of Bermuda, you, you wanna put in a half a pound to a pound of nitrogen per thousand square feet when the lawn fully greens up. You wanna put down a fall potash application of one pound of, of potassium, uh, and you can either use a rate of potash or potassium sulfate, and we'll go through that later. So for your regular nitrogen application schedule, you want to apply one pound of nitrogen in May, June, and July, August time frame, and that'll give you an annual nitrogen requirement of three pounds per thousand square feet for the full year. Your centipede grass, lime caution. Lime is generally not necessary for centipede, you should only be applying lime to centipede if the soil test recommends it. So the nitrogen application timing, do not apply nitrogen before mid-May. Start the basic nitrogen fertilization with one pound per thousand square feet around mid-May. So we start at the beginning of May, that way we can get everybody's nitrogen down on their centipede loans before June comes around. If you see signs of iron deficiency, yellow appearance may indicate an iron deficiency, and you can spray that with a ferrous sulfate or a chelated iron source. Follow the label directions, and it should be greened up within 24 hours. Additional fertilizer. So if you're going to put more than one pound of nitrogen down for your centipede, you want to, partic uh, and particularly this... Uh, applies to the coastal plain region because the nitrogen doesn't stay around in the sandy soil as long. You can apply another pound per thousand square foot in mid-August. And they say they consider to use a high potassium fertilizer like a 5515 or 8824. Um, and for soils with moderate to high phosphorus, they say use a phosphorus-free fertilizer. I would suggest using a phosphorus-free fertilizer. Don't use phosphorus unless you need to. And unless a soil test says you need phosphorus and you want to put down a 15014 or 8024 is what they suggest. For fall potassium application, four to six weeks before the first expected frost, apply one pound of potassium. And you can get that from either murate of potash or sulfate of potash. The annual application schedule. Here's how we do it. We put a half a pound down of nitrogen in May, June, and July, August time frame. But you could put one down in May and then one again down in July, August and get your two pounds. Total annual nitrogen, apply one to two pounds of nitrogen per thousand square feet. St. Augustine, total nitrogen application, apply a half pound of nitrogen per thousand square feet in May or two weeks after the grass greens up. The key to all this is after the grass greens up. They suggest to use a soil recommendation without a soil, without a soil, they suggest to do a soil test and it'll tell you what fertilizer you need. Without a soil test, a complete turf grade fertilizer with a ratio of 312 or 412. So like a 1248 or a 1648 for your St. Augustine. If you notice iron deficiencies, you can treat the, if the grass appears yellow and it's indicating the iron deficiency, you can spray um, a liquid iron on it and it'll green up within 24, 48 hours. Regular nitrogen schedule, continue applications of nitrogen, a half a pound per thousand square feet in June and August, and then they suggest one pound in July. So you're gonna put a half a pound in May, a half a pound June and August, August and then one in July and that'll give you total nitrogen per year two and a half pounds per thousand square feet. Georgia grass initial nitrogen application apply a half a pound of nitrogen per thousand square feet about three weeks after the lawn greens up. 
and they suggest to use a 312 or 41216 uh, for the fertilizer. Annual nitrogen limit, do not exceed four pounds of nitrogen per thousand square feet. I'm going to assume that's due to thatch buildup. And I would say the same goes for your St. Augustine. Um, that first initial nitrogen application, apply a half pound to a pound of nitrogen per thousand in June, early July, and repeat in mid-August. And then fall potassium application, once again, one pound of potassium, either murate of potash or sulfate of potash per thousand square foot in, I think they say, six to eight weeks before the first frost. So your annual application schedule, apply one pound of nitrogen in May, and then one again in June, and then one July, August time frame. That'll give you a total nitrogen pounds per thousand square feet. And so how do you figure that out? Like the first number on the bag is the nitrogen content. So if it's a 2202, you're going to say one divided by 0.22. And that's going to give you 4.5. So you'll need 4.5 pounds of that fertilizer per thousand square feet to get one pound of nitrogen. All right, here's some side notes on centipede grass and fertilizer. Avoid high phosphorus. Do not use malorganite or similar products for centipede grass as centipede requires very little phosphorus. Nitrogen needs. Centipede needs about two pounds of nitrogen per year, uh, every thousand square feet, and you want to distribute that over three to four applications during the growing season. Soil acidity and fertilizer. Centipede grass thrives in acidic soil. It wants the pH to be 5.5 or to 6.5. Ammonium sulfate as your nitrogen source is good for this. Uh, ammonium sulfate is good for this as it is acidic and will raise soil pH. So, and it will not, excuse me, it will not raise soil pH. So using ammonium sulfate as your nitrogen source, source is going to keep your pH low and therefore your centipede loan is going to, Thri uh, is going to do better than using a normal nitrogen source and continuously raising your pH. Uh, another side note for centipede is potassium sources, sources. There's two types. There's sulfate of potash and murate of potash. So sulfate of potash is very low in chloride, around 2%, and is suitable for centipede grass. Murate of potash, which is pretty much standard, so potash is that third number in like a 10, 10, 10. It'll be the last 10. That's the potassium. And you want to find that source. Murate of potash contains over 40% chloride. It has a high salt index and is not recommended for centipede loans. With that being said, here is our centipede and St. Augustine fertilizer. So we use a 15-0-15. We put a half pound down in May. We put a half pound down in June, and we put a half pound down in July and August. And so that's going to give you a pound and a half of both nitrogen and a pound and a half of potassium throughout the growing season. And then we're going to come back in the fall in September, October time frame and put another pound of potassium down to give you two and a half pounds of potassium per thousand square feet per year. 15% total nitrogen and 5.6% of that is a slow release for coated urea. It has zero phosphorus in it. It has 15% pond ash, which is crucial for stress tolerance and root development. And it's got 16% sulfur, which is beneficial for maintaining acidic soil conditions preferred by centipede grass. So it's high in sulfur, and that's going to keep your pH lower. And then it's got micronutrients, boron, manganese, and zinc. Uh, the nitrogen sources. The main source is ammonium sulfate and the be benefits of ammonium sulfate as a nitrogen source. It's a acidifying effect. Ammonium sulfate helps lower the pH of the soil, which is beneficial for centipede grass that thrives in slightly acidic soil. Remember, it wants a pH of 5.5 to 6.5 and that ammonium sulfate as the nitrogen source is going to help us to uh, get there. It's rapid avail available. It provides nitrogen rapidly to the plants, which is ideal for quick greening and growth spurts, and it has enhanced absorption and it enhanced absorption for other nutrients. 
So the acidifying effect can increase the availability of certain other nutrients in the soil, such as iron and phosphorus. The 15015 also has iron in it, potassium sulfate, and micronutrients. And so when I was explaining the potassium sulfate up here, um, that is our potassium source, and it is very low in chloride and is suitable for centipede grass versus the murate potash. Our Bermuda zoysia fertilizer is a 22012. <clears throat> That's what we're using this season. And we're going to put a pound, down, pound of nitrogen down in May, a pound of nitrogen in June, and then another pound of nitrogen in July slash August time frame. The, fer the fertilizer is made up of 22% nitrogen, and it includes a 17% urea and 4 point and a 4% ammonium sulfate. So it's got, it provides a quick release form nitrogen for rapid green up. And then it also has a slower release nitrogen to sustain it. So the ammonium sulfate of its rapid availability, ammonium sulfate provides nitrogen quickly to the plants. It's the soil acidity. It helps maintain a lower pH of the soil and it enhances the nutrient absorption. The, the acidifying effect can improve the availability of micronutrients like iron and manganese. It has 12.3% of slowly available nitrogen, and this encourages extended feeding. It provides a steady supply of nitrogen over an extended period, reducing the need for frequent applications, and it reduces the risk of leaching. It helps prevent nitrogen from washing away during rain or irrigation, improving efficacy and environmental safety. 12% potash derived from potassium sulfate. This component offers significant advantages. Again, notice sulfate, sulfur, sulfur, sulfur. Low salt index. Potassium sulfate has a lower salt index than other potassium sources, reduce, reducing the risk of root burn. Sulfur content provides additional sulfur, which aids in synthesizing proteins and improving photosynthesis, and it's disease resistant and enhances the grass's ability to resist disease and tolerate stress, including drought and I'm going to uh, say cold tolerance for. And then this 2012 has 10 percent sulfur. The 15015 um, has 16 sulfur. 2212 has 10% sulfur, and that supports plant growth by promoting enzyme activity and improving soil health. Uh, so uh, these fertilizers are a little more expensive than what we would get, That definitely more expensive than, than what we would get a big box store as far as quality goes, but it's well worth it to get the added benefits. Fall fertilizer, 0022. And we uh, sat down in September and October, and we're looking to get one pound of potassium. And so it's 22% potassium is derived from sulfate of potash. This component is essential for several reasons. Strength and disease resistance. It enhances the root system and increases disease resistance, which is crucial for preparing warm season grasses for winter dormancy. This is our fall fertilizer, preparing your lawn to go into winter and the S tolerance. It improves the plant's ability to withstand cold stress during the winter months, promoting better recovery in the spring. Without fail season grasses, when they go in to dormancy in the winter, when they're coming out of dormancy, a lot of times we're gonna lose a percentage of the grass. Centipede, you're gonna lose a bigger percentage of the grass than the other, other three maybe maybe St. Augustine as well. You're just going to lose that to disease. You're going to lose it to pests. You're going to lose it to stress. And so this potassium helps uh, promote that recovery during spring. And then sulfate of potash is low in chloride. So the potash sulfate is low in chloride, which is less harmful to plants, especially in terms of salt stress compared to other potassium sources. This 0022 has 10% magnesium. Mag or mang magnesium, it plays a cr critical role in chlorophyll production, and it's vital for photosynthesis. It also helps activate many plant enzymes for growth and contributes to protein synthesis. The OO22 also has 21% sulfur. Sulfur is involved in the synthesis of amino acids, proteins, and enzymes. It also helps improve the 
efficiency of other nutrients, particularly nitrogen. Notice that in this 0022, this fall application of fertilizer, there's no nitrogen. Um, that's for two reasons. It avoids unwanted growth. Applying nitrogen in the fall can lead to new growth that might not sufficiently harden off before winter, making the grass more vulnerable to cold damage and diseases. So you don't want to put nitrogen down in the fall. And secondly, it helps in energy conservation. Without nitrogen, the grass focuses on storing energy in its roots rather than pushing new leaf growth, better preparing it for winter dormancy and a vigorous return in the spring. So that's an overview of fertilizer for warm season grasses, um, when we're putting it down, what we're putting it down and how much. I hope this video helps you out. If you need us or we can help you out anyway, let us know. Have a good day.